Good morning, everybody. I'm Rebecca Kraft, professor of psychology and the director of the experimental psychology PhD program. Today, I want to share with you some perspectives of both graduate students and their mentors. And I gathered these perceptions a number of years ago when I had first served as program director and then later as department chair, of course I occasionally would hear about what I would characterize as misunderstandings between graduate students and their uh, mentors. And so around that time I was also reading a book on negotiation. Some of you in the, in the business area may have read this book, Getting to Yes, which is one of the international standards on how to negotiate with anybody and get the best outcomes. And so based on the structure uh, in one of those chapters of Fisher and Yuri's book, I put together this presentation. And what I hope it will give you is a sense of how your perceptions as a graduate student may differ from those of your research mentor. One of the most important things in learning how to be a good negotiator with anybody is understanding how the other side thinks. And so I hope that sharing some of this with you today will help you understand how your mentor thinks, at least in some cases. All right, so what I'm gonna share with you initially is a bunch of graduate student perceptions on the one side and the mentor perception of the same situation on the other side. And these truly came from actual graduate students and actual mentors in our department. All right, here's the first one. My mentor keeps asking me to do more and more. She or he must think I have nothing else to do but eat and sleep research. Has anybody ever felt overwhelmed by the tasks in front of you? I know some of you have already been in graduate school and many of you have already done research as, uh, or scholarly work as undergraduates as well. This is a common feeling. I often felt this way as a graduate student. Here's the mentor perception. This student keeps taking on more and more. She is so motivated and enthusiastic. She's really got what it takes to be a successful researcher. So the mentors, not hearing any objections, thinks, wow, this is really great. I can just keep giving this person more to do, and they just keep doing it. Or I need to get the best or most uh, uh, out that I can from the student. I just can't get to everything myself. Now, some of you already have the perception, probably, that faculty mentors are pretty busy, and that usually is the case. Uh, please don't feel like you can't interrupt their busyness, though, when you need something. Uh, all the mentors I know would much rather have you interrupt and ask when you need help with something, uh, but it, it is true. They're all busy. All right, here's another one. Graduate student perception. My mentor never lets me choose what I want to work on. He doesn't seem to think my ideas are valid. So mentor perception. I have to keep this student focused on a single line of inquiry, or she'll fall behind in the program and we'll both look bad. Or, we only have grant funds to support this particular line of inquiry, and we must show that we're productive to be competitive for the next grant. So the mentors focused on the money, and in many regards they need to be to, in a science lab, for example, to keep that laboratory functioning so that you can get your degree. Here's another graduate student perception. I'm afraid that any sign of weakness will be evaluated negatively by my mentor. I need to portray that I'm handling everything well. Mentor perception. My student is making mistakes but not owning up to them. He must be defenseless, defensive, or clueless, or irresponsible. Graduate student perception, my mentor is always criticizing my work. She must think I'm really stupid. Mentor, I need to make sure I'm consistently offering feedback to my student so that she can improve her performance as expediently as possible. 
if your mentor is serious about your training, they're very focused on trying to give you feedback at the pace you can handle, but probably at the limits of what you can handle, so that you can improve and be very competent at as many things as possible by the time you're done. So if you feel pushed, remember that's one of the reasons why. Graduate student perception, I never get any useful feedback from my mentor. He always says I'm doing fine. How can I improve if I can't see what I'm doing wrong? Mentor says, I'm afraid to criticize my student too much. He may get frustrated about the program or mad at me if he sees me as too picky. Okay, so some mentors are reluctant to particularly give negative feedback. They don't feel prepared emotionally to withstand a, a bad reaction, um, or they're worried that the student is just gonna quit on them and they don't wanna have that happen. So they don't say anything when they probably should. Graduate student perception. I have worked hard to gain admission here plus paid a lot of money and risked a personal relationship to be here. This program owes me the best training possible. Mentors thinking, I have trained for many years to earn my qualifications. My student needs to listen and learn from me in order to gain admission into the profession. And keep in mind, I actually, heard, these are real. I heard these from people over several years. Here's another, similar to what you saw previously. Graduate student says, my mentor doesn't give me enough guidance. I got many mentor responses to this. Graduate training is about developing a sense of independence. I asked mentor why, you know, some students think that you're not giving them enough guidance. Why aren't they? And they said, well, that's not my job. My job is to, to let them make the choices and let them figure out their own way, okay? My mentor always seems to change her mind on every draft of this paper. I wish she would just make up her mind so I didn't have to keep making all these revisions. Mentor's perception is drafting a good paper is a process. It's important to try several possible ways of presenting and interpreting data or information so that ultimately one arrives at the best product. Now, how many of you have been through a writing back and forth with a, with a mentor? Has anybody been through this? And how many of you have ever experienced thing where they, they change something and then on the next draft they change it back? Yeah, and you're like, okay, we just changed that. Why are you changing? Well, they were trying it out or they didn't remember what they did before. Graduate student perception, it seems like all my peers are getting a lot more and better, you fill in the blank. It's really unfair that other students are getting all the breaks, all the support, all the funding, et cetera. The mentor perception, it's really important that I train my students the best way I know how. It's up to me to make sure my student leaves WSU well prepared for their career. And no two students are the same and good mentors are gonna recognize that and they're going to individualize their training. So sometimes even people in the same laboratory or research group uh, are not treated exactly the same. Okay, we'll switch now, start with mentor perceptions. I need to make sure I direct my student to all of the pertinent literature in this area so that she can gain competence and knowledge. Grad student perception, my mentor gives me too much stuff to read. There's no way anyone could digest all this in such a short period of time. Sometimes mentors know that you can't possibly read it all, but they feel a responsibility to put it in front of you and see what you'll do with it. My mentor is not very friendly to me. Perhaps she doesn't like me or is a cold person. My student seems overly friendly to me. <laughs> the mentor-student relationship is about work, not play. Very different perceptions uh, in any given pair about how um, 
personal or how friendly the relationship should be. And here you go. Grad student says, my mentor seems overly friendly to me. This is making me nervous because I will be evaluated by her. Mentor says, my student is not very friendly to me. <laughs> Perhaps she doesn't like me or is a cold person. I, this really did make me laugh when I, when I heard it on both sides. Mentor says, my student never brings up any concerns to me. Everything must be going fine. Student says, my mentor never asks me how things are going. He must not care about my progress or is too busy to make time for me. So both people are waiting for the other person to ask or, or tell. Grad student thinks, in comparison to my peers, I think I'm doing fine in the program. So I've seen a number of students who, in their annual review, will be surprised at how they are evaluated by the faculty because they say, well, I've done more than so-and-so in the lab next door, so I think I'm, or I'm doing the same as the person in the lab, so I think I'm doing fine. Here's what your mentor may be thinking. When I compare my student's performance to mine when I was a graduate student, she's falling short. Okay, so this is your, you know, parents telling you they had to walk 10 miles in the snow to get to school and why are you having such a hard time taking the bus? Um, your, your faculty mentors, uh, even if it's unconsciously done, are sometimes comparing you to who they were when they were graduate students. And um, all, all of them were probably pretty darn good <laughs> when they were graduate students, which is why they're faculty now. But it's also possible that we have a little bit of inflated sense of how good we were when we were in graduate school. So don't forget, you're not just being compared to your peers. Grad student perception, I really need to take breaks in between tasks in order to refocus and rejuvenate for the next task. Sounds very reasonable. Mentor's perception, seems like every time I walk into the lab, my student is playing a computer game, texting a friend. He must not be getting anything done. This was actually mine, and I'll tell you why. So I started uh, working here at WSU in 1993. This was the days of Pac-Man and things like that that came with on every computer. So my laboratory computer had a few of these uh, games on them and I had a graduate student who in between testing rats in the lab would, would sit down and play five minutes of, of computer games uh, because it, it helped her relax and she felt like well I only have five minutes I can't get anything done uh, anyway. But, but Unfortunately for her, I always seemed to walk in when she was sitting at five minutes when she was sitting at the computer, and my response was to get all the games removed from the computer. <laughs> that was before everybody had their own individual computer. All right, grad student perception. I'm dealing with some personal issues that are impeding my progress in my program. I'd like to talk to my mentor, but she seems really unreceptive to discussing anything personal. I heard that she once told another student to go see a therapist if they were having problems. All right, these are small because I had a lot of different faculty responses on this particular issue. One was, my student seems to be struggling, but I don't want to seem like I'm prying so I'll just wait until he talks to me, okay? So it's faculty member trying to give the students some space and not invade into anything personal that they feel that might not be their business. That could be interpreted by the student as the mentor not caring. Or another faculty mentor perception, I can't risk getting involved in anything personal because it's my job to evaluate this person. It's better to recommend that a student with problems seek therapy instead of talking to me. So that person concerned that they maintain a professional boundary. Or, my student seems to be struggling, which scares me because I'm afraid I won't be able to help, so I'll just ignore it and hope he gets help from someone else. 
okay? Not all your mentors are prepared psychologically or in terms of their own maturity to deal with whatever you're dealing with and they may never have dealt with the difficult situation that you're dealing with and so they're actually kind of afraid that they'll be confronted with something that they feel inept at. So they just pretend they're not seeing anything. They won't do that if you actually talk to them about it, uh, but if you don't actually talk to them, some mentors won't, won't ask. Okay, last one. Personal issues? I just thought he was lazy and unfocused. So mentor completely misinterprets a struggling student, someone who's not making progress on things by assuming that it's just bad behavior and doesn't even consider that the student may be dealing with some very serious medical issues or family issues, et cetera. My rule of thumb that I tell all of my students when they start working with me and I tell all the students in our program is that if it's serious enough a situation to impede your progress in your program, then you should be telling somebody about it. That does not mean that you have to reveal anything, uh, any details of a personal nature but it's certainly reasonable to tell someone in the program, your mentor and or program director, that you are dealing with a very serious personal issue and you would like to know what your options are for dialing back on your program responsibilities so you can deal with this personal issue. They will try to help you do that. Okay, so I wanna, wanna end uh, with just a, a brief advice uh, and this again comes from these negotiation strategies that have been, uh, have a lot of research to back up their, their power. So how do you keep your relationship with your advisor on track? Just a couple of suggestions. If you do not get feedback unsolicited, then solicit it. Ask your mentor, how am I doing? What do you regard at this point in time as my strengths and my weaknesses, or if you'd rather not use the word weaknesses, say, what do I need to work on, <laughs> in your opinion? And heading into the next semester, what, how would you rank the priorities? Because here's how I rank them, but I want to know how you rank them. Always be proactive. Cre create semester and even weekly plans for yourself. You don't have to share all this with your advisor unless they want to see it. Some advisors will actually ask you to do this. They will help you do it and they want to see them. Always keep your advisor informed of what you're doing. Uh, for me, the biggest concern about a student is when I don't hear from them for weeks at a time. And if I don't happen to run into them in the hallway, I just start to wonder, well, what are they doing? I know what they're, what they're supposed to be doing and what they're probably doing, but if they don't ever talk to me, um, then, I, then I'm not sure. So don't disappear. Most of the time I find when students totally disappear off the radar, it's because something is not going well. And so I try to always seek my students out and say, is everything going okay? Do you need help with anything? But not all mentors will do that. They're very busy and sometimes uh, out of sight is out of mind. So don't fall out of sight. Another really uh, primary negotiation strategy is to always separate the problem from the person. What does this mean? It means to avoid finger pointing. So if I was having problems with you as a student, I would never say, you, you need to work harder. How does that make you feel, me pointing at you and saying that? Is that a good feeling? Okay, most people will be like, mm. <laughs> um, When you finger point and make accusations, even if they're accurate, it makes people defensive. And you will get nowhere in your negotiation for improving the situation. So the way to express to your mentor, for example, that you are struggling, even if you think it's their fault that you're not making progress, say, I'm having difficulty meeting this schedule. I know that you, we've talked about this goal for me is to get to this point in my work by this point in time, but here's what the roadblocks are. Can you help me get past those? 
Okay? So instead of saying you're an unreasonable SOB, you say I'm having difficulty meeting this schedule. Okay, get on the same side of the table. This is actually uh, in business circles uh, uh, physically the case that if you have to do a difficult negotiation, you actually try to get next to the person rather than in front of them. Because again, it's less confrontational. If you are both on the same side of the table looking, say, at a project you're working on together, then you are more like a team working on towards the same goal. Literally, physically is true. So try to get on the side of the table that you think that your mentor is on, which they want you to make progress, something like, I'd really like to make better progress on my project so I can continue to move through the program proficiently or get this paper published, get this project completed. Can you help me? Okay, I leave you with my uh, email address and my phone number. I'd be happy to send this presentation to you uh, if you send me an email. Um, I think we have a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, seeing none. Oh, there's one. Yes? Yeah, so the question is, if you have an issue, is there somebody you can talk to? If you run into problems with your mentor, of course, um, you will be told this by all your graduate program directors, et cetera. You should try to work it out with them first. Uh, if you cannot, if you've made, you feel you've made a good effort to work it out with your mentor and you're not able to make any progress there, the next person to try is the graduate program director. There should be a faculty member in every unit who is responsible for coordination of the graduate program or programs in your department, and, and they should be a good person to talk to. If that person is not available, the next person to talk to is the department chair. Um, the graduate school is also available to assist in these kinds of situations. And actually, I'll tell you, I would be happy to assist. Um, I've, uh, sad to say, I've actually had to deal with a lot of conflicts between graduate students and mentors, but probably only because I've been here for 25 years now. Uh, and almost every year, there's at least one. Um, so uh, you have a lot of resources. Do go and try to get things addressed before they boil over to the point where you can't stand it anymore and you want to leave. We do not want your graduate training ruined because of one relationship, and we can usually help you work it out. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, go Cougs! <laughs>